Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a system of equations by graphing. So to solve a system of equations by graphing, it's very important to understand what exactly are you solving. How do you solve a system by graphing? Well, the, system of the, the solution to a system is going to be the values for x and y that are going to make both equations true. So you can see here we have a system of two equations. And we have two variables, x and y. So what's going to the values that are going to make that true, the solutions, are going to be the values for x and for y that make both of them, both of the equations, true. Meaning we could take those solutions and plug them into both values. So how is graphing going to help us do that? Well, where a solution is on graphing is going to be where the two lines uh, that we graph are going to cross, since we're talking about linear equations. So where they cross, they're going to cross at exactly one point mostly some of the times. So we'll talk about other solutions here. But where they cross at one point, that is going to be a coordinate. Now remember, a coordinate has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. A coordinate point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. Those values for x and y are going to be what is going to be the solution of the graph. So to solve a solution by graphing, the main important thing is we have to graph our two equations and determine if they cross. And if they do, where do they cross? And what, the, what is the point of those values? So since we're trying to find the x and the y coordinates, when you're graphing, I highly recommend that you use slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b to graph, rather than using the intercept method, you know, where you um, just find the x and the y intercept and then connect them. Um, that method I don't think is as beneficial uh, for you in this example as would be using slope intercept form. So to graph something, um, to graph equations, you can see that a majority of them, I only have one equation that's already in slope intercept form. So we're, if we're going to draw graph equations using slope intercept form, the first step we're going to want to do is convert our equations to slope intercept form. So I have 3x plus y equals 6, and I have negative x plus 2y equals 12. So to go ahead and solve these for, um, put these in slope intercept form, uh, I need to, you can see my variable, I need to solve for y. So you can see here my variable y is being added by 3x. So I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. When doing that, I get y equals, I write my variable in front of my constant, a negative 3x plus 6. Over here, uh, you can see my, my y is being multiplied by 2 and being subtracted by 6. The first thing we're going to want to do is add the x to both sides. Therefore, I have 2y equals x plus 12. Then I'm going to want to divide by 2 on both sides here. And I obtain y equals uh, x, x over 2 plus 6. Remember to divide the 2 over the x and into the 12. Now, this one gets confusing for a lot of students because they don't understand, you know, how do I write, the, what is the slope of this? Well, remember, there's a 1 right there. So we can also write this as 1 equals 1 half x plus 6. Now, we could go ahead and graph these two lines. But the one thing I noticed that they both have in common is a y-intercept. So guess what? If they shared the y-intercept, what do you think the point is where they intersect? The y-intercept. So the solution is 0, 6. If you plug 0 in for x and 6 in for y for both of these equations, it would make your equation true. However, just because this is also part about graphing, let's just go ahead and graph these. Um, if you want to fast forward to the next problem, feel free. But I want to at least graph these so people see how to graph. So let's graph this one first up to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I rewrite my slope as a fraction. Negative 3 over 1. So I can go down 3. 1, 2, 3. And then to the right 1. Connect my two points. Over here, I still have my y-intercept 6. Now my slope is 1 half. So instead of going down, I'm going to go up 1 and then over 2. Connect my points. And again, you can see they intersect at 0, 6. All right, so I'm going to change markers here um, just so I can don't get myself confused. So now I have another two equations that both of them are in standard form. So therefore, to, to graph these, I'm going to want to rewrite them in slope-intercept form. So I have x plus 2y equals negative 6, and negative 6x minus 2y equals negative 14. So again, when solving the slope-intercept form, the main important thing you want to do is solve for y. So you see my y is being multiplied by 2, added by 6, which is very similar to this one, very close. So the first thing you need to do is undo subtracting by 6. So I'm left with 2y equals negative x minus 6. Now I divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get y equals, now in this case, there is a 1 in front of this x. So you could have the negative in, in top, you could have the negative in bottom, or you could have the negative in front. And we like to keep the negative in front. However, when you're graphing, it's not going to matter 
if you use the negative in the numerator or the negative in the denominator. But we'll get to that when we graph this. So for over here, the first thing I need to do is just like here, I undid the adding x by subtracting. Here I'm subtracting a 6x, so I'm going to want to add a 6x to both sides. By doing that, I'm left with negative 2y equals 6x minus 14. Again, we always write our variable in front of our constant. Now I'll divide by negative 2. Negative 2, and I'm left with the equation y equals a negative 3x plus 7. OK, so let's go ahead and graph this one first. Um, so I'll go down to my y-intercept, which is at negative 3, and I'll make a nice big dot. Now, we're again, I told you, negative 1 half is equivalent to negative 1 over 2, and it's equivalent to 1 over negative 2. It's the exact same slope. And I'll show it to you why it works. Remember, if it's negative in the numerator, that's going to tell you to go down. So you could go down, down 1 to the right 2. Down 1 to the right 2. Or you could have the negative in the denominator, so that's going to tell you to go up 1 to the left 2. And you can see these three points all lie in the same line. So when you have a negative in front, just pick numerator or denominator. OK, now in the exact next example, I have positive 7. So I'm going to go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And now my slope is negative 3. It's a whole number. So when graphing this, it's important to put it over 1. And then I want to go down, because I know i got to meet this value. So I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. Now you can see this kind of has a trouble here, because the lines, you can, you can, um, you can kind of crisscross them. But we want to know the exact value. And that's why slope-intercept, is very I think, is very helpful. Because even though we can quickly find the x and the y-intercepts, we want to find where they exactly cross. So I'm going to get a little bit more detail here. So if I go down over, over 2. If I go down 1 over 2 here, so that's at 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's at 4, down 1. OK, and then if I go down 1 over 2, that's going to be at 6. So 6 comma, let's see, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be 4 comma, fi or 4 comma 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 comma 6. OK, so let's see where this graph. So I'm going down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So you can see that they cross at 4 comma 5. So it's very helpful. The reason why I told you to use slope intercept form, because it might not be apparent. It might not be something so quick that they intersect. You might have to just follow slope. Because remember, slope is the change in coordinates between any two x and y coordinates. So um, you might have to keep on using slope. Even though you only need two, line, two points to make a line, you might have to keep on following it so you can get exactly their intersection point. Now, fortunately for us, in this last example, we already have an equation in slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and graph that. So I'll go down 2. And I didn't try to do this, but um, I, I have a negative 3 over 1 again. Now, in this case, negative 3 is going to take me really far down and then over to the right. Um, so what I'd rather do is start going up. So instead of doing negative 3 over 1, I'm just going to switch it to 3 over negative 1. So I'm going to go up and to the left instead of down and to the right. See, like here, I had to go down, so I went down and to the right. But you can also go up and to the left. So I have negative 2. So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, left 1. Okay. Um, so I'll go and connect those points in here a second. Let's go ahead and solve this for y. So I will subtract a 5x on both sides. I'm left with 2y equals negative 5x minus 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals a negative 5 halves x minus 1. So in this case, I just wrote it as a fraction in front. I didn't even bother trying to simplify it like I did before. Um, so now I'm at negative 1. And I need to go either up 5 or up five to the left 2 or down 5 to the right 2. So I guess it really doesn't matter. Let's just go. So I could go up 5, 1, 2, 3. So actually, you know what? Let's, um, let's do two of these points. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. OK, so if I went up 5 over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2, you can see that 
these two points intersect at that one point. So they intersect at the point of, so the solution here was 4 comma 5. Here the solution is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you can check your answer by um, taking this point in for x and for y. So you can take your solution and plug them back into the equation to make sure that they work. Uh, but to keep the video kind of short here, I'm just going to go over the graphing portion and how to determine the solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations by graphing your two linear equations. Thanks.